If you had told anyone three weeks ago that this team would be the Eurobasket 2022 champion, probably even the Spain fans themselves would have laughed you in the face. It was their least talented team in years, but one element remained unchanged, Sergio Scariolo. 61-year-old head coach was the real MVP of this team, bringing the best out of every player and confusing any offense with multiple defensive systems during each game. My name is Augusto Szolauskas and in this video we are going to look at how Spain and Scariolo conquered Europe. Garuba, back to watch Ergen Gomez, another three! He's moving into the spotlight! Mixing defensive schemes became the trademark move of Scariolo's game plan. A lot of casual fans probably got to know the now famous box and one defense, which Spain used twice in the playoffs to steer the game their way. With 5 minutes left in the 8th final matchup against Lithuania, and with 5 minutes left in the semi-final against Germany. Both times it isolated the opponent's best perimeter player in clutch time. First it was Grigonis and then Schroeder and together with some luck allowed them to kill games and keep the dreams of the whole nation alive. In the final, the defensive variety was in full display. Spain started the game by man-to-man -man defense with aggressive pick-and-roll coverage on Evan Fournier, forcing the Frenchman to pass out the ball. But that meant Rudy Gobert becoming the decision-maker on the short roll. A smart move by Scariolo's coaching staff and, as you could have guessed it, a disastrous result for France. They finished the game with 19 turnovers, 10 more than Spain, and these three were only the beginning of a downfall. Collet tried to counter with Spain pick and roll, but the Spaniards obviously were prepared for that as well. You could hear the assistants yelling out the calls, which meant Willy dropping deep in the paint, avoiding the back screen and everyone staying home. It made the ball handler's defender work extra hours, but this is where an 11-man rotation from the start of the tourney until the very end of it helped tremendously. I don't remember last time a winning team played 11 guys more than 13 minutes each, but look at Jaime Fernandez as an example. Aggressive on the ball and active with hands, forcing additional turnover after turnover. Let's quickly switch over to the other side of the court. Without a real advantage in the post against a huge French front court, it was mostly pick and roll offense in the first 10 minutes for Spain. Lorenzo Brown continued his domination against Drop, utilizing high quality screens from Willy and manipulating the defender into fouling or creating open mid range shots. Spain's key to efficient screen and rolls was playing it to the side of two, which meant only one player can tag the roller on the weak side. Here Pradilla shorts the pick and roll, Vertil becomes the tag man, doesn't do it, and Willy has a free runway for a dunk. The next time they played it, with Pradilla cutting from 45 and Garuba popping, creating a 2 on 1 situation and Alberto Diaz successfully converting on the advantage. For every move, Scariolo had a counter. To start the second quarter, Vincent Cole brought out his two big man lineup and it transformed a 9 point deficit into a 20 point crisis. All of the offense suddenly went through Juancho, that put Fall into extreme discomfort. One off ball screen followed by slip and it seemed like the movie Hustle all over again. In the next possession it's a flare screen, followed by an entry pass to the post and a split action which Fall is definitely not used to guarding. Rudy dive cuts and Mustafa has to help. Juancho reacts quickly by popping back and nails his second free pointer. Then Franz fought. What if we surprise Spain by putting up zone defense? Well, that didn't work either. Watch Rudy Fernandez's movement here as he screens the ball, then clears out and takes a position on the wing, creating an overload and a millisecond confusion. Later, it's feed the hot hand until it misses time. Garuba makes himself available on the free throw line, Juancho is aware of his defender's position, stretches out the distance, and it's four triples in a row for Bo Cruz. He had 18 points in the second quarter alone, as Spain touched a 20-point lead. Serena Gomez, you are kidding me! Somebody call Los Bomberos! This man is on fire! But to put France in such a deep hole, Scariolo Spain made two more 200 IQ moves. First, they went into a 1-2-2 zone after Colate's timeout. It starts with Rudy on top, but he slides down on a pick and roll, and later Spain do a good job of contesting and then peel switching on every drive to the rim. After a second timeout three minutes later, they went into a box and one with Fernandez on Fournier. Just to illustrate how it makes the opponent uncomfortable, Yabuzele has a wide open lob for Gobert, 
but does not throw it. Okobo's pass is too late and too risky, and you start getting the idea of why it is so tough to play against mixed defenses. Yet, after everything that didn't go their way in the first half, France went into the break with only a 10-point deficit thanks to Huertel and Fournier, who managed to show a bit of individual greatness before the halftime buzzer. The best thing they could do was cut it to 3 points thanks to one adjustment from Colet. Remember hedging defense and short roll with Gobert? It was Yabuzele now doing it and it was that much more efficient. But the most important adjustment never came. France couldn't decipher the code to vary zone defenses Spain threw at them. Can you blame them? Nobody really did in this tournament, but in the final it was especially obvious since it seemed like every time the Spaniards sat in zone, here a 1-2-2, the possession ended in a turnover. Spain were amazing playing the passing lanes, forcing drives instead of catch and shoots, and then being active and helping each other. Against Box and one France tried the same lob play for Gobert later and it's yet another evidence of how all players are not used to attacking this type of defense. They play the one scheme that was prepared all over again and not reading the situation. If Gobert does not roll here so deep but instead stops here and seals Brazuela high, it's an easy lob and two points. Yet he rolls hard, the timing is off and France turn the ball over. They had 19 of them, while Spain had only 9. This, together with more offensive rebounds, resulted in 14 more field goal attempts for Scariolo's team and it's hard to lose a game shooting this many more times than your opponent. The game was closed out by none other than Lorenzo Brown. The point guard was Spain's number one option throughout the Eurobasket delivering masterful fourth quarter performances every time they needed one. After distributing more in the first halves of matches, making sure his buddies get their confidence up, he was the one taking people on his back on passive pick and roll defenses and scoring from mid-range. But against France, it was his passing that sealed the deal even in the last 10 minutes. First, a rare sight of them using the next defense with Ertel stunting hard to the ball and Brown kicking the ball rightfully so to an open teammate. Later, Brown once again takes his defender on his back and I'm not sure what Ertel does here but no one from his teammates are ready for it and it's that guy once again. See how we've gotten to this point. Diaz and another three-pointer for one of the great stories of this Phoebe Eurobasket, Diaz. Isn't it kind of iconic that a guy who got called back to the national team only because of an injury to Sergio Yui was the one to seal the victory? It was his defense that made him one of the biggest revelations of the tourney, but for me Alberto Diaz was the perfect example of why Spain surprised everyone. Scariolo constructed a group that was playing to its strengths and everyone was happy to be a star in their role. Pour in some genius game planning and scouting from the staff and you get the best team in Europe right now. What surprised you the most about Spain's shocking Eurobasket win? Leave a comment down below and I'll see you in the next video.